how's it going YouTube? After playing this build a lot more today and trying out fear with actually using a rare claw, I can confidently say that this is probably the fastest build in Expedition League. And it's the fastest build I've personally played since Vault Fireball, which is saying a lot because I've been spamming Ore Stacker for forever. But everyone knows that Ore Stacker is not really the fastest build around, but people who say that they play like mere bow builds and this clear speed is faster and you don't even need a headhunter. And not having to use a headhunter is a huge benefit as we all know that belt is extremely expensive. But the speed you get from this build is just obscene in terms of the investment that you actually have to put in. Because like all my gear together, besides maybe the rare claws, and I only use one rare claw at the moment, and I am going to teach you guys all how to craft a 600 PDPS shaped rare claw. There's actually some tech that I figured out or someone told me about that actually allows you to craft 600 PDPS rare claws very easily. Not like extremely cheaply, but it's actually easy to do it compared to how it would be normally, which is almost impossible. So I'm going to show you guys how you can craft the rare claws and what the end game best setup will possibly be. But basically, this build's clear speed is unrivaled. The whirling blade speed with berserker stacking attack speed and the berserk effect is just absolutely insane. And there's also another tech with warlord's mark that allows you to have almost perma berserk uptime in maps. But that's if you have enough damage. And overall, this build has been a joy to play. I did do a lot of levels and maps today. And I didn't even die. And I was actually able to level up. Well, I did die, but I was actually able to level up all the way to 95 to 96 while doing almost every single mod available on the map. So the clear speed pretty much stems from the attack speed and the world speed that you get. A lot of people forget that back in the day when cast on crit discharge was a thing and baked chicken used to play, that whirling blade speed was pretty much everything about how fast. Here you can see I'm using Hydra Spear, Chain Hook in order to get Rage before the fight. And this is actually a pretty important tech, right? Because without Hydra Spear and Chain Hook, Hydra Spear literally makes this build so much better. So before the Hydra Spear existed, you pretty much would do like half damage or so. But now with Hydra Spear being able to get Rage with Chain Hook, it's a completely different ball game. So let me get into the build and gear overview. Then I'm going to show you guys how to craft a rare claw. And then talk about a little bit about the Chain Hook Hydra Spear tech and Warlord's Mark Rage tech. Okay, let's go over the gear overview because I did end up crafting a new ring and I fixed up my weapon to be Shaper. This, I, this claw used to be another claw. It was called the Brimstone Barb Imperial Claw. It was a Warlord Claw, but now it's a Shaper Claw. But basically, for today, I ditched one of the Touch of Anguishes for using my real claw. Oh wait, it's not called Brimstone Barb. This one's called Cataclysm Barb, and this one's Brimstone Barb. So ideally, if you use two shaped Touch of Anguishes, the damage is more than enough. In the pub I provided yesterday, the damage was still like 23 million or something. Or 30 million when you consider the blades too. So basically we have, I'm using one rare claw and the main reason you want to use a rare claw if possible is because of the attack speed and that is actually a huge difference. So if you look at the attack speed differences between these two weapons, it is 1.98 versus 1.6. So that's actually one of the reasons where you want to use it. And you can also see the damage is actually pretty different. It was 180 to 407. This was 93 to 275. So the damage is vastly different. And now we have the Eternity Shroud. And I've been trying to look to getting a plus one max res and plus two projectile. I think plus one max res is very good for survivability. But if you want to go for pure damage, plus two projectile is the best. And then plus one gems is really good. And then here we have Berserk Effect, this helm I'm trying to replace, I'm trying to make a Blizzard Crown, but I can only craft so many pieces of gear a day. I actually got really unlucky on this claw and I'll tell you guys what happened and it took me, I think I lost like 20 exalts because I failed an Ashling. So basically this one, I want to make a Shaper Blizzard Crown and I don't even know, Shaper Warlord is what I want to make because I want to Awaken Orb together, nearby enemies take 9% elemental damage and multi. And then I want to try to reforge fire to be to get uh, Fizz taken as fire. And that's pretty much the goal for this helmet. 
I do think Berserk effect is the best enchant as it allows us for the uh, allows us to do the, do the most burst, and it also gives us a survivability because the buff effect also affects less damage taken, and it also gives you more attack speed, right? So this is the ring I ended up crafting. I pretty much just spammed harvest with uh what's it called rolling caster you can also use fossils to craft this and these are the fossils that i use i think it's etheric so what this means is more caster modifiers fewer attack modifiers so this is pretty much like going to harvest and rolling like reforge caster but i didn't want to run harvest i didn't want to use tft to buy a bunch of harvest craft so i just stuck with this right now this item is not too bad three percent chance to evade attack hits is not really that bad but obviously you could get a lot more offense i'm thinking about just exalting this ring because this is pretty much as good as i'm gonna get for now unless i do something wild right so this thing is pretty much just for warlord's mark first attack because assassin's mark kind of loses a little bit of its value because i'm pretty much crit cap without needing any crit because of secrets of suffering so i will probably exalt this maybe right after this video it's another ring with some resist and strength and some wed so this is pretty ideal there are a lot of dead mods on this ring so the evasion could be uh flat fizz and the strength could be like attack speed or multi so the gloves i haven't really fixed i pretty much just divided a little bit i should probably bless these gloves because 17 percent is pathetic for compared to 20 so this is a pretty like budget pair that i made i pretty much awaken orb to get a strikes to additional nearby enemies and blind and then I pretty much just annulled off the, what's it called, the blind, or I did reforge, um, I kept prefix and reforge suffix while crafting on life, and then I did it until I got a usable mod, which ended up being cold res, and then I just multi-mod it for attack speed. I guess another way of doing it is probably to multi-mod and reforge speed and then craft on, but this is probably a better way, it's cheaper. And it's a pretty budget pair minus the actual awaken orbing aspect of it. And this pair of belt, I kind of want to get percent life. So I need to do a shaper elder or shaper hunter belt. And the way to approach to make the belt is to probably just get the resist down. So you probably just spam some uh, resist essences on the belt. And then after you get the resist done with, you will want to craft on suffixes cannot be changed and then reforge life more likely and try to hit life and percent life. It's actually not that hard to make this belt and then you can craft on wet and I think that's the best way of doing it. And all these little upgrades of getting percent life here on the vermilion ring, percent life here and getting more percent life on a tree should bring the character to around 6k HP. I do think when you have like 6k HP with acro, phase acro, and leech, and maybe vault pack leech even, that your character will be pretty unkillable. And this pair of boots, you can get to be full ailment immune. You can get 35% ailment immune, 20% on the belt from elusive effect, which is that belt enchant. So then you're at 55%, you can get 20% right here. So then you're at 75%. You can use elegant form and sacrifice a small cluster. And that will allow you to get 15%. So you had 90%. And then the last 10%, you'll pretty much just use implicits. So you can get a chance to avoid ignite, shock, and freeze. And then you'll pretty much be ailment immune. And you're pretty much a raider without needing to be a raider, right? At least that portion of it. So that's the nice part about having to wear shaper boots. And eventually, I will want to get Shaper Claws, and I'll go over how we can make Shaper Claws and actually get five, 600 DPS Claws without that much effort. So right here, the tree, I did sacrifice. I did take out Volpack. Volpack is kind of annoying for mapping, but for bossing, it's really, really strong. But for mapping, you don't want to play with Volpack. There's too much degen on the ground that could get you killed, and looting Volpack maps with desecrated ground or burning ground is a complete disaster and i dropped one of these attack speed nodes and i pretty much just went to get some life nodes because i do think having more life is better and i was able to get to level 96 so this is level 96 while pretty much like doing all the content in the game doing all the conquerors doing katarina doing awakener and not really dodging any content right i took these nodes right here because they're pretty point efficient and they also increase the maximum life recovery per second 
So like the main reason we want to use immortal ambition, a lot of people ask, why do we use this glorious vanity? And the reasoning behind that is it allows us to have always be leeching life, even if we're at full life. And it allows us to use jewels like this, Feed the Fury, which is 30% attack damage and 15% attack speed. And then we have currently running two Feed the Furies. And we took out the other Blanket of Snow. We actually replaced a 10 Exalt Jewel with a 1 Exalt Jewel. And it's actually much more DPS. You don't want to use Blanket of Snow if you use Secrets of Suffering. And we're no longer doing all Chaos damage, right? Or cold damage. So you can look that cold damage is actually the lowest damage. So fire pen is probably better than anything else at the moment. Which is kind of weird because we're only converting 50%. But it has 30% of cold added as fire. So this is pretty much a build that really demonstrates the power of being at the end of the conversion chain. So now I'm going to talk about how I made this claw and what happened to make me waste so much money. Right here is part of the claw crafting process. So the claw is already shaper right now. So I look at the claw and this is probably my like 15th, 20th attempt already. Or like 15th attempt probably, right? Or 10th or 12th attempt. So I give him the claw. It has prefixes cannot be changed. So the prefixes are finished on the claw right now. So he goes reforge speed to try to get attack speed. And I've literally been stuck trying to... I'm, like, I'm not even that greedy. I was settled for T1, T2, or T3. I literally got like T8 attack speed like 3-4 times in a row. And then I also got full suffixes one time, meaning that I had to... So you can see here I got 13% attack speed. So I got full suffixes one time, meaning I had to buy a reforge key prefix in order to fix the claw. So a lot of people ask, how do you actually make the claw? So easiest way to do stuff is to always go into the emulator. And we want to create a new item, right? So we want to make a claw. So one-handed weapon claw. So here we want to use an Imperial Claw. Now the main thing we want to keep in mind is that the claw should always be have 46 have life gain for each enemy hit by attacks. A lot of people think that what's it called that Terror Claw is better because it's higher base damage, but Imperial Claw is by far the best. So right now when the claw starts, we don't want to have any influence on it because having influence mod uh, influence claw means that's a lot harder to actually roll the claw because there's more mods right so the way you want to start off this is this is already at 30 percent so what you want to do is first of all you want to buy this with a tailoring tempering orb enchant right so what this means is that you want to be able to buy the claw with this mod right here so these don't have the tempering orb enchant so i actually have a few claws ready to go these this one has critical modifiers of six percent increased and physical have six percent increased and this one here has all sockets are blue and physical modifiers had 10% increase. So this claw is going to be my next crafting project. So it's very important that you buy this tempering ore base as it makes crafting a lot, lot easier. So there's like two ways of crafting it. One way is like this method of fractured. But if you make, if you do the fracture method, that means the claw could not be shaped, right? So this method here, this person, I bought this claw from someone and this guy just got lucky on the prefixes to get Merciless, Flaring, and Reavers. So getting Merciless, Flaring with uh together is probably extremely, extremely difficult. And you might get it when you Jagged Fossil Spam, but do not count on it. What's more likely is that you get Flaring with uh Hybrid. And that's what we're looking for when we're trying to Jagged Fossil Spam. So right now, we pretty much just do Jagged Fossil over and over and over again until we see flaring with a hybrid roll. So it might take you a while, right? So you will probably be doing this for quite a while. It could easily take like hundreds of attempts before you see even like flaring. So the main thing is you want to get flaring with a hybrid roll. And let's just, uh, let's, just do, let's just run through this a little bit. So right now, okay, we got it, right? It's not that bad. Flaring of a hybrid roll, right? And this is T4 hybrid, flaring. So if you get like flaring and merciless, the way to go about it is the same exact way. You want to annul off the prefix. And if you hit off the flaring, you need to restart. So here, you've, there you go. You annulled off the prefix, right? So if this was merciless, let's say, what you want to do is you can almost guarantee a hybrid roll by crafting on, so this is the main thing that you want to be doing, is crafting on prefixes cannot be changed. And then, let's see, prefixes cannot be changed is a suffix. So you want to craft that on. 
and then you want to use harvest to reforge fizz right but this is only if you have merciless so this is like oh you didn't get it so the chances you get you get leech you get mana leech life leech or you get percent fizz so this is not the method of doing it right because you see the chances of getting merciless is almost zero while doing it like this but the chance if you do if you had merciless to begin with with flaring the chance that you get a usable hybrid roll is pretty high because we can settle with T4 hybrid or even T6 hybrid with Merciless. So if you somehow get lucked into Merciless flaring, then you should do what I just showed you. But if not, this is not the way to go about it. Well, it's still the same way. You still craft on prefixes cannot be changed, but right now we're not going to be greedy. We're just going to settle with a plain old Veiled Chaos Orb. So right here, Veiled Chaos Orb, we get the prefix. Now this is a pretty high chance, I think it's like, I don't even know, 60-70% to get... Oh nice, so we have two choices here, we should usually try to choose blind on hit as it's very useful for surviving. So there we have it, we have the prefixes finished, and it was actually not that bad. I just spammed Jagged Fossils a little bit, it's not like I was spamming like crazily. So what you're trying to aim for is you want to get flaring with hybrid. And then you want to know off so you have open prefix so you can craft on, suffixes cannot be ch prefixes cannot be changed and then use a Veiled Chaos Orb. So this does not really require going to TFT, right? So that's pretty good. So right now we have the suffixes. So now what we want to do is we want to craft on prefixes, cannot be changed again. And now we need to go to TFT. And this is the step that I actually got stuck on. So now you need to do reforge speed. Wait. Okay. This is just bugged. Like I don't really know why it's like this, but... There's no reason why this um, emulator is should be like this. Right now, if you craft out prefixes, cannot be changed and do reforge speed, it should work. But I think it's like bugged with the program or something. So basically, let's do it like this. Let's uh, no off and do we no off a suffix. Yeah, but what I showed you right there, it should work. And I don't know why it doesn't work. But anyhow, your prefixes cannot be changed. And now you want to do reforge speed. And wow, we got pretty lucky because we got T1 Celebration. Now this is kind of weird because right now we have a crit chance roll, right? So now we want to know again, try to get off that. And now we have to craft this on again. We want to try to know again to get off. Oh, we just got off the wrong thing. So you can see that we have to go back to square one. So now we have to go reforge speed again. So you can see this step can get pretty expensive. I don't really know what's going on. I think the crafting thing is bugged how is it keeping on the crit chance again okay so let's just say let's just say we kept doing this and somehow we got rid of the crit chance so the crit chance mod is like bugged on this craft of exile thing it seems like oh it finally got rid of it it's not bugged sometimes you just get really unlucky in this crafting process so now that you have this all you have to do is at this point it's pretty much done you just go to benchcraft and then you craft on crit chance quality and then you're done and then you call it a day if you want to get really lucky you could craft on prefixes cannot be changed and you can use ashling and then craft on crit chance quality but that's a huge risk and that's what i did i had t2 attack speed on my claw and then i decided to gamble on it and it did not go up so well so but you actually can't even do that because it has an Ashling. Oh yeah, this method you can't actually do that method because you already have a chosen mod. My claw is different because the claw I crafted here, you had uh, Merciless and did not use Chosen. But that's just something that you probably will not be able to copy. But this is the way of doing it. Now you might be wondering how do you make a Shaper, right? So before you do any of these steps, I should have probably included this. Is in order to get to this step right here. Okay, so let's know off the suffix. Okay, so right now, this is actually the main way or the main discovery is that we can craft on suffixes cannot be changed or prefixes cannot be changed and then use this harvest craft called reroll influence. Let's see if it's actually here. Reroll influence. And even though it seems like this shouldn't work. It keeps, it respects the meta mods. So I don't know what is going on here. Oh okay, I think, I think something is wrong with uh, Craft of Exile. It does not know how to do this crafting. 
it's too hard for Craft of Exile to figure out what to do. So Craft of Exile cannot actually assign a random influence to the claw. So I can see that's probably why most people don't know the trick. So right now what you want to do is you get the claw, you craft on prefixes cannot be changed, and then you go to your hoarder crafting bench and you buy this craft called Randomize the Influence Type as well as reforging this item with new random modifiers. This actually respects the meta mod. So this claw here, I started with the prefixes. I crafted it on suffixes cannot, prefixes cannot be changed. I bought, I did it four times and it cost two exalts each attempt. And I was able to finally get a shaper claw on the fourth attempt. And that's how I crafted a 600 DPS shaper claw. Normally it's, it's very, very hard to craft a claw. Now the reason why it's hard is because if you go to the calculator, and you go to a weapon and you go look at a shaper weapon, right? If you spam Jagged Fossil and try to do what I just did, you will see that it is much, much harder because of all of the random Fizz mods. There's a Fizz here, extra Fizz mod here, and there's extra Fizz mod here, extra Fizz mod here. So all together, there's 6,700 weight. And then like this stuff is, so it's already double as hard to try to get what you got. Or not double as hard, but this is already combined to be more percent fizz and hybrid fizz. So that's actually the trick of getting a shaper claw at 600 DPS. And main thing to focus on though is that you need to buy an imperial claw of a base of physical modifiers of increased effect. It makes it so that a claw with just using the ash sling prefix, the chosen prefix, will have around the same DPS as a merciless uh, T3, T4 hybrid claw with Flary, of course. So hopefully that helps everyone out. I know a lot of people are wondering why I'm not using dual shaped claws. It is very, very expensive to do this method, but it's just something to keep in mind in case you have like some crafting project or anything in the future, because I actually had no idea that it respected meta mods like that. But now I'm going to play some what's it called, another feared fight, and then a quick map of a T16 to showcase how fast this build actually goes, blows through maps. find the right words and there's no way this is real life there's no telling you're the right girl so i can only say that it feels right it feels right it feels right yeah i can only say that it feels right it feels right it feels right yeah i can only say that it feels right I had to die. 
like this is just a must. Put me in perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now. We know I ain't ballin' yet. Hoes wanna holler, oh no, I don't call them back. Girl, let me see you hold it down, we gon' have a blast. Cause I just wanna know what you gonna do with all of that. Ain't gotta say a word, I know what's up. You can have it all, watch me rip it off. I'll admit it, you got me feeling hella love. Even when it's going down, know that we gon' live it up. Young shot caller, always been a baller. Know that you the one, I can feel it in my heart, yeah. I won't stop charging, we going come harder. I can see you and I, way beyond the stars, girl. I can never ever find the right words. And there's no way this is real life. There's no telling you're the right girl. So I can only say that it feels right. As you can see, that fear is a little cleaner. I did die from being like overzealous, and one of the things was just crazy. I went into the elder circle, and there was like ten things, and the elder started slowing me. To, but if I was in hardcore, I would log out. But in softcore, we just kind of take it, and it's like, okay, we'll die now. So that's just how the fight goes, right? You have to log out when you're in a situation where you can't do anything. But you can see the fight was pretty fast and the build definitely has more than enough damage to do any of the fears. So next in line for this character, and I just want to give you guys a little teaser, is probably trying out Wild Strike. And I actually think Wild Strike might be better than Frostblades, but we'll, I'll let you know. And you can always tune into the stream to see the experimentation and to see how much pain it goes into crafting stuff. Like, I do have to warn you that crafting stuff like this can cost you a lot of money. I literally blew through 40 exalts trying to make this claw. And it's, it's definitely fun to craft in a weird way if you like gambling. But it's also really extremely unfun because you have to interact with Harvest on TFT. The worst part about it is you always have to vouch people. And then there's so many channels and you have to go look at their name. And it's just a complete disaster in my opinion. But that's more of a... That's more on GGG than TFT Discord. GGG is making us go through TFT to trade the Harvest Crafts, and they're pretty much perfectly fine with how trading Harvest Crafts currently is, but hopefully they find another solution because using the TFT Discord is extremely annoying, and there's always a chance you might get scammed. Although I have realized that scammers are a lot less frequent now that people realize that they actually get banned, so good on GGG for that, but... Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you find more mirrors and exhausts than I do, and see you next time, bye!